similarly okay get the point thank you okay so now we have tuple so tuple is uh, similar to the list except one change here is that uh, uh, tuple is immutable okay so when we say tuple is immutable so it means like see if if you will uh, if you remember the uh, methods related to the string okay let's say i have a string s is equal to python and this is the space right so if i will write print s dot strip so when i'm writing this when i'm writing printing this uh, you know operation then it is giving me one output correct it is removing the spacer and it is giving me the output so basically since string is immutable object so doing any operation on the string it creates one new string object okay if you do any operation on the string it creates a new string object but when we saw about list let's say we have lstl is equal to 10 20 30 and if we are doing almost all the operation we saw that let's say if you are writing print l dot append okay uh, let's say 100 if you are writing so running or doing any operation or uh, running any operation on the list it was creating none because it was doing the changes into the same list object in the string it was creating a new string object it was not making any changes into the existing string so it will print s s is as it is okay the, this is the s is this string okay and s dot strip is a new string uh, whereas in the list if you will see list so list is updated okay so it was making the changes into the list object okay why because list is mutable object so whenever you do some operation on the mutable object so the changes will be made to the existing object only whereas in in case of immutable object it will create a new object okay so similarly when i will talk about tuple so tuple tuple It's similar to list when I'm saying similar to list it means it is a sequence okay so it can be indexed and it can be uh, you know you can apply slicing it is an ordered collection of elements right and uh, then what else uh, uh, <coughs> uh okay what else yes you can do the basic operation like concatenation then repetition then you have um membership operation right you can run the loop over it correct so these all are the basic uh you know operation which you can do on a sequence okay now I'm not going to do uh, indexing, slicing, concatenation. We have already done that. Uh, but apart from that, tuple, only one difference is tuple is mutable. Okay. And apart from this, one more difference is that, that in the case of tuple, all elements should be kept inside this bracket, which is optional. Okay, and should be separated by comma. Now, when I'm saying this is optional, so let's say if you want to create a tuple, tuple is equal to, I can write 10, 20, 30. If you will check print tuple comma type of tuple, this will be a tuple type, okay? Fine. Yes, tuple is immutable. Have I written it mutable? Yes, it is immutable. Sorry. Immutable. Okay. So this is a tuple type. Now, let's say when I'm saying this is optional, so you can remove this. For example, you may write uh, tuple 1 is equal to 10, 20, 30. And still, if you will check the tuple and type of its tuple 1, so it will be a tuple type. Okay, it's still it is a tuple type. So you can see I've removed this bracket. Now, the question comes is, uh, uh, you know, if you have one element to create a tuple, so if you are going to write tuple is equal to 10, okay, so this will not create a tuple. So you have to write a comma because comma is mandatory. So I will write tuple 2 here. And if you will check 
just tuple two and type of it. So this will be tuple type. Okay, this is also tuple type. So if you will not write this comma, let's say if you will try to create a, a tuple with one element, but you will keep it inside the bracket. So this will not create a tuple. Why? Because see, removing this bracket will lead to what? It will be an integer, right? This this bracket is optional. You may write it, you may not write it. Okay, so if you will not write it, it will be automatically become an integer. So if you write a value inside the smaller bracket, that will be considered as an integer. So in this case, it will be considered as an integer. Okay, so if you have a single element and you want to create a tuple, then you have to write that element and comma is mandatory. You may write this bracket, you may not write it. Okay, fine. Yes, you can store any type of element inside a tuple. Tuple, as I said, it is similar to uh, list and uh, uh, it is the any, uh, you know, collection of non homogeneous elements. Okay. Uh, and it allows duplicates also. Means allows. Yeah. Fine. So now let's say what all are the different ways of creating the tuple. So once if you know the element, you can directly write it inside the bracket, you can create the tuple. The other way is using the eval function we have seen. Okay, so using eval function also you can create a tuple and the third way is to use tuple function. But tuple function remember always take a sequence here. Okay, so how it will be created, let's say if you will pass so it work similar like list function if you'll write tuple four this will be creating a tuple like this okay yes Panni, any question you have yes sir uh, the eval function you said i missed it somehow the eval okay. function okay. eval function we have discussed already also so see here what is the problem if you are passing this sequence to the uh, tuple function it is creating a tuple with the elements uh, where uh, you know every element of the string is taken and uh, that becomes the element of the tuple. The problem we have seen in the list also. Let's say if you are want to create a tuple, if you want to take the input from the user, right? So you cannot do the type casting with the tuple here. Input. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Remember? So you cannot do that. So in that case, what we do, we we use eval function. Okay. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Okay, so these all are the different ways of creating the tuple. And uh, next uh, we have, uh, let's see what all methods we have. So to get the list of method, we have DIR of tuple. If you run this, you will see that there are only two methods, count and index. Count is similar to the string and list. Index is also similar to string and list. Count returns to the count of the element inside a tuple index method returns to the first occurrence of the element inside the tuple and it will return you the index of that element okay so wherever the matching is done so this is these all are the two methods i'm not going to discuss about it again i hope you guys remember from the list and string we have done the enough discussion there and this all method we are not going to discuss because these all are not required so we don't have much method in the tuple yes there is an important topic that is tuple packing and unpacking okay so what is tuple packing so when we say uh, packing so packing means uh, packing multiple values into a single variable okay for example uh, here this is an example of packing okay you have multiple values and this multiple values you are assigning to one single variable this is one example of packing the other way of doing that is you may let's say uh, you have four variables which are ha assigned four values. Okay, so this is also a good example of packing. Here you have four variables A, B, C, D. They are assigned with four different values 10, 20, 30, 40. And how you are doing the packing? So to the single variable, you are assigning the four values, you know, allocated in four different variables. So this will be an example of tuple packing. You have packed four value into a single variable. Clear? So similarly, there is an example of uh, just opposite of it is tuple unpacking. What is tuple unpacking? So uh, in the case of tuple unpacking, you will unpack the values to the from the tuple to the different variables. For example, let's say um,
you have this tuple in this tuple you have different values okay 10 20 30 40 50 60 now what you are doing you have taken six variables here and you have uh, assigned this tuple to those six variables okay it means these multiple values inside this tuple are unpacked into this six other variable okay so if you will print this variable it will give you all the values 10 20 30 40 you can print e and f it will give you 50 and 60 also so you have unpacked the values from the uh, this tuple to the variables okay this is called a tuple unpacking but remember in this case the number of element in the tuple uh, and the number of variables should be similar if it if there is any mismatch it will give you the error for example if you are having five variables which is giving too many values to unpack and if you will have let's say uh, seven variables then that will also give you the error not enough values to unpack okay expected seven and got six okay so this is going to give you the error so number of this should be matched okay now this will be fine so this is about tuple packing and unpacking clear any question uh abhishek i have a question yes uh currently what you are trying to do is your fixed uh, variables you are uh, from the tuple you are extracting it hmm. If you don't know the size of that variables count, mm -hmm. how you will get the length using length function? Uh, how many variables also? I don't know. How many? See, uh, currently we have a, like a tuple, right? No, oh, so the tuple, um, no, no, go to the up. Uh, I think, uh, the cell of 15 mm -hmm. in this tuple, uh, I don't know the size of ABCD, uh, uh, so it may be n n size. So in this case, how we can able to? No, for packing you should know that how many values you should you have, right? Okay, I want to that a b c d count uh, should be dynamic. Know, how how you will get a b c d count? For packing, you should like you know when you pack the element, you cannot say when you pack your uh, luggage, you you don't say that I have to pack the whole home or the whole world into a single package, right? You have you have some fixed amount of things which you should pack into a single thing, right? So this thing you it should be known to you earlier, okay? It cannot be so. If you are saying n, that is also fine. N number of element you can pack into that, okay? So that will be kind of infinite thing you can pack into that. That is also not a problem, but you should you should know this in advance. It cannot be n. It should be a fixed number. You should know in the advance. Similarly, when you are coming to this, in this case, you should know the length of the tuple. So for that, you have length function, you can get the, I can understand that here you may have the problem, but here you should know the number of element. Uh, okay. Uh, I have taken the use case of like, when you have like n number of uh, rows, where you are tuppling, uh, extracting it. So I can directly use the array pass the particular length. That is what you are conveying. Uh, n number of rows uh, that yep. uh, let's say if you are saying n number of rows okay so mm -hmm. n number of rows in the in the real case there will be no n number of rows there will be a fixed amount of rows so you can get the number of rows easily okay right in the real time there can no be there, there cannot be n number of rows right there will be a fixed number of rows so you can get the number of rows that is that is the real time case okay the uh, Ashik, can we use uh, a list in the tuple like for example 10 is there right can we use one comma two and as a list so can we do like that uh yeah you can do that so let's say i will keep this inside the square bracket and then if you can run this you can see this is the list okay thank you uh type and int changes if you pack and unpack tuple see how there is no concept of type and id see this tuple is a new tuple object okay so obviously this a b c d is a variable which are pointing to these four different object okay so the id of a is different id of b is different c is different d is different but when you uh, write them collectively they are into tuple so collectively their id is for this tuple correct and when you come here so let's say 10 20 30 40 in this case id of 10 20 30 40 50 60 is different and this tuple object is also different. 
but when you write a b c d e and f these all are the variable which are pointing to these objects these objects follow the object usability concept so a will be pointing to the same id of 10 b will be pointing to the same id of 20 and so on okay fine okay so i think this one is clear packing in the case of packing you should know this number of element okay without knowing the number of element this will not be possible you have to know this and in this case you have to know the number uh, length of the tuple so for that you have length function so let's come to the dictionary uh, example now in the dictionary uh, we know that dictionary is a mapping structure and uh, it is a combination of key value pair in the case of key value pair one key value pair is called an item okay so what all uh, properties we have in the dictionary so we have discussed it already that a dictionary is a key value pair where one value is assigned to the key so now remember one thing that whatever uh, role uh, is played by uh, index in the case of sequences here key plays the same role okay so in the case of sequences if you want to access a value you go ahead and do indexing you know you have to know the index similarly if you want to access a value you should you can access them using key okay now there is one difference between sequence and dictionary that dictionary is not a ordered collection of the element there is no index value yes but if you want you can create uh, uh, you know index as the key and then you can access them okay how you can create the dictionary so if you already know the dictionary in advance you can simply go ahead and write the values inside this middle brackets okay uh, with the key value pair that will be creating a dictionary for you okay so for example this is a dictionary which we have created now this dictionary if you will see so this is the student one which is the key and the value associated with that is this dictionary okay this Similarly, we have the second key, which is student two. And for this, the value created is this one. Okay. Now inside this value, if you will see, it is a nested dictionary inside this, we have this name, which is a key and the value is ABC. Similarly, low roll number is the key and 101 is value marks is the key and 60 is the value. So let's say if you want to access any key, uh, sorry, any value. So let's say if you want to access the information related to student one, you may simply go ahead and the Syntax is similar to indexing. You have to write the dictionary name square bracket and the key name std one. Okay, so it will give you the information related to std one. It has given you all this information. Now let's say inside std one you want to access let's say marks. So what you will do? You will go ahead and write this std one, and after this you will write the square bracket again, and you will write here marks. Right. So if you run this, it will give you the marks associated with student one. Clear. So uh, this is how you can access an element or a value inside a dictionary. Uh, now, let's see how you can Yeah, so there is one, okay, item assignment. So, okay, so dictionary is mutable object, okay. Dictionary is mutable. Now when we say mutable, we can make the changes to the uh, existing dictionary only. So there is an assignment operation which you can do. Let's say if you are doing this assignment operation for student one and marks, you are going to set 98. So what will happen? See, in the case of dictionary, in the case of dictionary, it will It will uh, not create a new key okay with this key value pair what it is going to do is it will update the dictionary with this key so in this d dictionary student one is already existing and in this student one this marks key is also available which is set to 60 but now this will be set to 98 with this okay so now if you will run this if you will print this d now again so you'll see that this dictionary is updated with the new value marks 98 okay clear
Okay. One minute. Huh? Okay, so now the next one is um, what all method we have in the dictionary. So to check the method we have, again, let's do this dir of dict. And these all are the methods which we are going to discuss clear, copy, from keys, get, and uh, these all are the methods. So let's write it here. Okay. Now inside this, uh, uh, we are going to this all method. Uh, we are going to discuss this all method. These all methods are not required. This uh, the one starting with double underscore ending with double underscore. Uh, we will discuss about them. Okay, this clear copy from keys get items keys. So let's see first uh, how you can uh, you know uh, update a dictionary. Okay, so for updating a dictionary. We have get and set default method. Okay, so one way to update the dictionary we have seen that using assignment operation. Using this operation, you can update the dictionary. There are other ways using update the dictionary is get and set default method. Okay, now what this get and set default method does? So, get method basically it gives you the value associated with the key. Okay. So for example, let's say, if I want to access the value associated with student one. Okay. So I will simply write here std1, d.get std1. What it will do? It will give me the value associated with student one. If I run this, I'm getting the value associated with the student one. Now, let's say if I'm trying to run this get method on a key which is not available then what it will do it will give me none because this key is not available it is going to give me none okay but instead of showing this none in the output i want to show some default output to the user for example here i want to show that this key is not available i will write that you know whatever i want to available i will write it like this so this is the default value which will be shown to the user if this key is not available okay so now if i will run this so you will see that it is showing this key is not available okay fine so if you are not writing anything then by default it will show what none but if you are writing anything, then whatever you are writing as the second argument, that will be shown to the user as the output. Okay. If the key is not available and if the key is available, then it will show you the output. But remember, get method doesn't create a key value pair with this combination. You can see that's why I printed D in student uh, in, in this dictionary, only two key value pair are there student and student two. Okay. Now set default, set default is similar to get. But only one difference with the set default is that in the case of set default, in the case of set default, if the key is not present, then it will create a key with the provided value. For example, let's say if I will run this student one is available. Let me comment that student one is available. It will give me the value associated with that. So. If I'm running this, I'm getting the value associated with student one. Okay. And there is uh, no such uh, student one or something is created. You can see only two keys are available. But let's say if I'm writing, um, if I'm writing this d dot set default nine now. Okay. So this key is not available. Okay. So what it will return? It will return none because this key is not available, but as well as it will also create a key value pair 
where student 9 will be the key and none will be the value. So if I will run this code, now you will see that for student 1 it is returning this value and for student 9 it is returning none as well as in the dictionary you can see that one key value pair will, is created with student 9 and none. Okay, fine. Now, let's say if I will run this student 8 and I'm writing this key is not available. So in this case what it will do it will give you that the value associated with student 8 is this key is not available and also it will create a key value pair with this combination in the dictionary. So if I will run this, you can see here the student 9 was already there. Student 8 is created with a key value pair and the value associated with student 8 it is showing as this key is not available. Okay, so this is the only difference between get and set default. Is it clear? Fine, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, next we have if you want to update a dictionary, let's say this is one dictionary we have. Where is that dictionary? Okay. So, this is the dictionary we have. In this dictionary, in this bigger dictionary, what we want to do, we want to update this dictionary. Okay. Now, what is here? So in the case of update this student one, if you will see this student one and this student one keys is already available in the bigger dictionary and two and three are not available. So if I will apply this update method, so this is similar to extend method in the list. What happens in the case of update method, this D one will be updated in D. Okay, means this dictionary, whatever dictionary you will write here, this dictionary will be updated in this outer dictionary. So here std1 is what 100. So what it will do in this dictionary std1, uh, uh, this value will get replaced with the 100. It will update this dictionary with the this key inside this dictionary. Okay. And 2 and 3 are not there. So this will be created inside this dictionary. So if you will run this print D, so you'll see that std1 is now updated with the this value, which is in D1. And 2 and 3 are created because they were not available. Clear? Yes. Okay. Now yes, we have how we can remove an element from a dictionary. So for that we have pop and pop item. Now pop method basically works in two ways. It takes uh, one argument and uh, okay. So let me write it this. First. Uh, Abhishek. Yes. Uh, why uh, in the above one? Why this std two is uh, created? It was STD a different was key, not, right? STD two was already there, no? STD two is already there. Okay. In D, we are updating update D one. So in D, STD two was already there, right? Yeah. Okay. So now let's see this. Pop and pop item. Pop. Let's say. Um, uh, okay. So let me do this. So we have this dictionary uh, as of now. Okay. So if I will run this D, so you'll see that this this same dictionary we have. Okay. So let me come into this, and we have this STD one and STD two. Now what we are doing, we are going to pop. We are writing D S of STD two dot pop, and inside this pop, I'm writing remove this key name. Okay. And I have written this key is not present. So if I'm trying to remove a key which is not present, then it will show you this value. And if this key is present, then what this pop will do, it will remove that value and it will return the value which it has removed. So now if you will run this, let's see that after that I'll be printing D also. So now if I'm running this, I'm getting this is the original dictionary. Now in student two, what is the name in student two, the name is XYZ. So it has printed XYZ. So what I said, if you run the pop method, whatever key you are removing, it will, if, if, if that key is available, then it will remove that value associated with that key and it will return that value. Okay. It has returned that value. Okay. Now when I'm printing D, then it is, uh, you know, uh, giving me this. So this name is not available, but let's say if I will try to remove a key, which is not available. Then in that case, what will happen? So I'm going to remove a student three and in student three, I'm going to access, I'm going to remove name. Okay. Or let's, let me do student two 
and then again I'm removing name. So after this operation name is not available and again if I'll try to remove name then what it will show? It will show this value. This key is not present. Okay. So it is showing this key is not present. Clear? So if you are trying to remove a key using pop method which is not so what if if you will not write this then nothing it will print key error okay so this key error basically may disrupt your execution of the code so instead of doing that what we do we write here some default value okay that something that will not raise the error okay fine clear everyone yes okay now pop item pop item is a function which removes a random key value pair from the dictionary okay so when you say random it may remove any key value pair for example let's let me do one thing let me comment all these things and run the dictionary again so we have this dictionary okay and when i'm saying d dot pop item it has removed the student to key and the value associated with it so the difference between pop and pop item is pop will return you only the value associated with the key which you want to remove but since pop item removes a key value pair and that is random it may remove anything it has removed this key value pair from the dictionary so it is returning student to and this means this item has been removed from the dictionary clear Abhishek, what happens uh, when the uh, dictionary is empty? Uh, if the dictionary is empty, it will, it may raise the error. Let's see. And uh, then this key error. Okay. Abhishek, as this pop item is uh, removing items randomly, how, how we use it? In when we should use it, uh, you don't have any control over it. To specific yeah, you, don't, you you don't have that sort. So uh, let's say if you just uh, you know you you want to remove any default any item, so you go ahead and write that. But see the use of this pop and pop item is that whatever element it will remove. If you want to do some operation on that element, you can assign this to a variable, and then you can do the operation. Okay, probably you may not, uh, you know, you may not have the access. Let's say what you can do, you want to empty this D dictionary and you want to copy all the item into another dictionary. So you can run the loop, okay, till, uh, you know, let's say 10 elements are there. So you can run the loop for 10 times, you can pick one element, means you can remove one element using pop item, store it in element and add that this element into the new dictionary, okay. So that way you can do that. So there are there are few cases where it will be useful, but we will use pop where we can, you know, if you want to remove a particular element, you can access it using pop. So for a while loop, uh, you have to use len to find out the length of the dictionary? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, now next we have item keys and values method. So what they do, basically item keys and values, uh, just now you said that to find the length, you have to find the length of the dictionary uh, applying length function. Other way is also to do, let's say, if you want to access the item or keys or values. So uh, D dot keys basically will return you the sequence of the keys. Okay. So if you will run this, let's say if you are going to run D dot keys, then in this case, I have removed all the items. So in this case, it is going to return you a sequence of the keys. Now, if you see, it is in the square bracket. Internally, it is a sequence. The type of the return type of D dot keys is dict underscore keys. Now, what is this dict underscore keys? So this dict underscore keys is a generator. Okay, internally, it is working like a generator. If you want to find a list out of them, then you can wrap it around, uh, wrap it around uh, a list function or a tuple function okay so you will write list here you will get a list out of it 
okay so basically i can say that like see list function you were wrapping around uh, range function then a reversed function so that was giving you a sequence of values similarly here you are applying list function d dot keys so i can say that d dot keys is also returning me a sequence type right so you can wrap it around that and then you can get a list or else if you will not do that also you can run the loop directly over it to access the key or do any operation on the key or on the value okay so if you will let's say if you want to access the value you can just run it uh, run the loop over d dot keys you will get the keys and then you can access the value by saying d of i okay so for example let's say if i run this so this is the value you will get associated with d of i okay so for doing a number of operations on the dictionary we use this d dot keys d dot values in the case of d dot values you will directly get the values okay so uh, let me remove this type will be d dot dict underscore values if you will run this you will be directly getting the values inside a sequence the type is dict underscore values when you say dict underscore values again it is similar to dict underscore keys which is a sequence okay and d dot items is basically the items in the dictionary okay so it will return you the items or sequence of like like here you are getting this in the square bracket everything similarly you will get everything in the square bracket but the element or the items will be inside the tuple separated by tuple okay so inside the tuple there will be a key and a value so for example let's say if i run this you can see this is a tuple where you are getting as student one as the key and value as a second element student two as the key and value as a second element you can print d dot items directly here okay this will give you this you can see here this is also sequence can items keys and values used together see there is nothing like you, why you cannot use you can use all of them together why not so no problem it will give you keys values and items everything okay so these all are the methods and the next we have uh, from keys so from keys uh, mainly used for creating a dictionary okay with some default value let's say i have an empty dictionary d1 inside d1 i want to create a dictionary where the key will be one two and three it won't be a list one will be one key two will be another key three will be the third key so if i will run this then the dictionary which will be created here will be you can see one two three are the keys but the value default will be set for them is none okay so what you need to do let's say if you want to default some default uh, you want to set some default value for them so let's say you want to set let's say 100 for all the keys then you can write that second argument as the value and then the default value will be set for them now but using this from keys you cannot create a dictionary where you will set a different value for one a different value for two or a different value of for three you cannot do that okay fine whatever second argument you will mention that second argument will become the default value for all the keys clear fine everyone yes now the next uh, we have copy method we have discussed already it creates a shallow copy of the dictionary so using copy method you can create a shallow copy so let's say if you have d2 is equal to d dot copy then d2 is d this is false why because id for them is different but if you will check for the inner dictionary the id will be similar okay so what you need to do basically uh, if you want to create the deep copy again you will write from copy import deep copy and then you can write d3 is equal to deep copy of d okay now this will create a deep copy fine clear so these all are the different methods in the dictionary go ahead and practice it the last topic here is dictionary comprehension so dictionary comprehension basically how do you do that so dictionary comprehension so to create the dictionary comprehension first you will write this bracket here you will write the expression 
and then for some variable in a sequence and any condition you may write okay so this is the dictionary comprehension for example let's say if i want to create a dictionary uh, with some key value pair so where Hmm. No, one minute. Yes. So what we have, let's say, we have a list. LSP is equal to This is a list. Now what I want to do, I want to create a key value pair where every this every city will be mapped to a key and the key will be a number. Okay. For example, one colon Bangalore, two colon Hyderabad, three colon Chennai and all. So what I will do, I will write one dictionary first. Okay. And here I will write count plus one colon name okay and here i write for count comma name in lst okay so let me run this too many values to unpack expected to sorry this should be in okay so you have this dictionary which is created with this key and values okay so i have written count plus one count is basically so enumerate function what it does if you will write uh, print enumerate of lst so it is going to return one enumerate object, but if you will write it inside a list function, so it is basically creating a list of tuples. Okay. And this list of tuples is what the index value, the index and the value at that particular index inside the tuple. Okay then you can see this index one and the value associated with it index two and the value associated with it and so on clear so that property i have used and then i have created one dictionary here clear everyone yes panini so, so enumerate can be used for uh, uh tuple also well, as in it is lst it can be used for uh, yeah it can be used for tuple also basically for any sequencing even for dict yeah. maybe I don't know, but a dict, a dict actually is not ordered, so it might not be used for dict, but yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Clear everyone. So this is it about dictionary. Now um, we are done with the all the data structure. Okay, which is important for us uh, in these classes. So next we will start with the functions. So functions, what you need to do. So you need to practice all this data structure. I have uploaded the assignment for, if you see here.
Yeah. So this is the four assignment condition, list, string, and dictionary. Okay, all these four assignments are uploaded. Go ahead and practice these assignments, complete the assignment, upload it by Friday. But yes, start practicing these other assignments also. Uh, if you can do it, like, you know, if you want to practice dictionary or list, you can go ahead and practice a few questions from there. And once we will go to the function, we will not have enough time because after function, hardly we will take three or four class to complete this whole Python. Okay, probably function will take two class and then one class for regular expression and then one class for exception handling or in uh, one class, both exception handling and regular expression will be covered. So hardly uh, maximum three or four class we require. So by this week, your core Python will be covered and uh, then we will be having NumPy and Pandas so we won't have enough time so go ahead and practice this so that you can get acquainted with it and then probably from tomorrow we'll start with the function yeah uh, abhishek don't don't we have classes classes no we don't have uh, classes and objects okay not required as of now okay anything else any other question guys No. So no, sir. let me end this session. We'll meet tomorrow again at the same time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.